Hi, I'm Karen. I'm also known as the Preacher Lady. I'm a minister and a lifelong geek. This video comes from deep within my soul, that torture part that's trying to find my way and God's way for my life. This is for all the geeks out there, the Dungeons and Dragons, the cosplay, the convention attending, science fiction and fantasy loving friends. I truly crave your thoughts and opinions, but please no hate comments because I'm truly seeking what I can or even should be done. First, I feel the need to establish my geek cred. I have always been a stereotypical nerd. I have been bullied because I was smart. In elementary school, I walked over a mile to catch the bus so that I wouldn't be pushed down and forced to eat dirt, or worse, worms. I snuck down to my brother's room to watch Star Trek and Logan's Run because my parents thought science fiction was too scary for a five or six year old girl. I was mesmerized when Star Wars came out when I was 10. I went to my first Star Trek convention in the early 80s when I was 14. And when I realized people were actually coming in uniforms, I had my mother help me make a costume for my brother and for me. And I've been cosplaying ever since. Well, unless you count being Princess Leia for Halloween in 77 and 78 and 79. If so, then I've been cosplaying since I was 10. I discovered Dungeons and Dragons in middle school, back before it was even advanced Dungeons and Dragons. In high school, I was both a theater and a choir geek, not to mention having a 4.0 average. I met my husband in college in the gaming club, which while I was an officer, we officially changed our name to the Vanderbilt University League of Gamers and Role Players, even though the yearbook refused to let us use our acronym of vulgar. Through all this, I still had a strong faith. When I felt called into the ministry, my mentor asked me two questions that should have tipped me off to some of the problems I would face in the church. One, how will you respond when you encounter those who believe that women shouldn't be ministers? Two, how will you respond to the people that think Dungeons and Dragons are the equivalent of Satan worship? To be clear, he didn't agree with either of you, but he knew that I would, what I would soon learn, that the church is made up of sinful people, just like the rest of the world, and it's most dangerous when it believes it's being righteous. It's always bothered me that people that I feel the most kinship with are the most absent part of the church. I've spent many long nights in college over Dungeons and Dragon tables, waiting in long lines at conventions to see the latest Doctor Who or CW DC guests, discussing why this is so. I've discovered that most geeks fall into two categories. The first I will call the Sheldons. Like Sheldon Cooper on The Big Bang Theory, they were raised or just encountered churches that taught you couldn't believe what science taught. They believed that all Christians believe in creationism and that the world is only a few thousand years old. And they're shocked when I say this is not universally true. The Presbyterian Church doctrine says that there's nothing in science that contradicts what we believe. For instance, the Bible itself says that God's time is not our time. A thousand years is just a moment to God. So creation could have easily taken billions of years. Also, not all Christians believe everything in the Bible has to be taken literally. My favorite example is in Genesis 1-3, God says, Let there be light. Sure sounds like a description of the Big Bang to me. Hebrew culture, the culture in which the Old Testament was written, is filled with parables, with analogy, and <gasps> even poetry. There's a group of NASA scientists that write a Christian journal for the scientifically minded discussing new scientific discoveries and how they show God's glory. Presbyterian ministers wear these weird off-putting black robes that creep out some church visitors. But those robes have their origin in master's robes. Education was so important to John Calvin one of the Presbyterian Church founding fathers, that ministers wore their graduation robes to prove that they had a formal education. Presbyterian ministers are still required to have a master's degree. And yes, it's a real master's degree. You wouldn't believe the number of times people asked me, is a master's of divinity a real degree or is it just honorary? 
Three of the most challenging years of my life included learning to read both Greek and Hebrew. That argues, yes, it's a real master's degree. The second category of geek I call the wounded. Just like in my school, many of my geek peers feel unwelcome in church. Whether it's because they play D&D, or because they learned what they learned in science class, or because their sexual orientation doesn't fit with what some well-meaning but misinformed church members in their past told them, or whether they were actually asked to leave church because of who they were or what they believe. These friends of mine had real reason to mistrust the church. I do my best to explain to them that it isn't God, it wasn't Jesus who rejected them, but sinful, fallible human beings. John 3.16 teaches us that God so loved the world, not just the chosen few, not just the churchgoers. We are called to love our neighbors, and even more, we are called to love our enemies. And the Bible tells us not to judge. So if someone is judging, they are not doing what the Bible says. No matter how much of God's healing grace and love I am able to show those who have been seriously wounded, I have very little belief that I will ever get them to go through a church door. And that's clearly not just a problem with my few friends. At Dragon Con, there was one lonely Fans for Christ table and more than 16 Good Without God tables. And now Fans for Christ has disbanded. A group called The Bridge is now trying to fill the gap. From my experience, most geeks are good people. They volunteer. They give to charity. At Dragon Con, they give gallons upon gallons of blood. They march for equality, and they serve their fellow human beings wherever they can. They fight for justice. They are also spiritual. They hunger for meaning. They seek the truth. All of these things are things that Jesus taught and God wants from us. And it breaks my heart that we as the church have driven off or alienated these wonderful, beautiful human souls. So a couple of years ago, my husband John Paul and I were admiring a geek easy, a grill and bar in the back of a comic book shop. He only half-jokingly suggested that I start a geek church. He thought it should be called Geek Orthodox Church. But the word orthodox has a lot of negative baggage for some people. He said we could meet in the back of comic book shops. We could discuss faith in comic books and movies. And then we could work together for good. I rolled my eyes at the time. But it's been gnawing at me ever since. I also keep running upon a relatively new Presbyterian phenomenon. It's called the Thousand and One Worshiping Communities. This is a program that is helping us reimagine what it means to be faithful outside of the normal church. There's one group that is cyclists for God. They bike for 10 to 20 miles, then they stop for a meal and worship. My friend and fellow minister, Katie, was giving an update on her Missing Peace Worshiping Community at Presbytery meeting. She was talking about how her group comes together in homes and coffee houses and parks where their children can play. They worship through cerebral and spiritual and physical service. To me, that sounded like my geek friends. They were doing it. The missing piece was reaching those people who felt strongly called to serve, but for one reason or another had turned away from the church. And Katie was actually excited when I mentioned my silly dream of reaching out to my fellow geeks. And her thoughts were seconded by two other geeks who just happened to come to speak to Katie about similar things. Katie suggested that I start talking to people about my dream, that I write about it. So I blogged. I went to a thousand and one worshiping community training. I reached out to some geek friends both inside and outside the church, and we tried starting to discern if God wants me to start a geek church. A year later, this has morphed into Geeks of Faith. At our last meeting, we decided we needed to go multimedia. We needed to start an online community, a community that can also come together locally to study and work for good and play together as a geek family of faith. 
My question to all of you is, what do you think? I strongly feel that I'm being called to reach out to the intellectual, the comic book reading, the role-playing, the cosplaying, the sci-fi and fantasy-loving community. Would there be an interest to join together in an online community? When we go to cons, would you like to meet over drinks? Because yes, Jesus drank wine, and believe it or not, he probably danced as well. Would there be a need to gather before or after superhero movies, or at escape rooms, or even around the D&D gaming table to discuss faith, being faithful, and what is the meaning of life? And yes, I know Hitchhiker's Guide has already told us that the meaning is 42. Would there be a need to serve others by visiting children's hospitals dressed in your favorite, as your favorite superhero, or feeding the hungry, or giving blood? But most importantly, does the church itself need to reimagine what it is and what the geek culture could bring to it? If you think so, if you agree with me, please join us in our Geeks of Faith Facebook group or watch for our weekly devotions. Faithfully yours, Karen, the Preacher Lady, a blogger, cosplayer, AD&D role player, sci-fi and fantasy amateur author and humble seeker of faith. Peace.